So I want to start first in asking, where did you first see this cartoon, Christmas Comes But Once a Year? Wow, it goes back a long way. I know I was a kid when I saw it and uh, probably only saw it in black and white, come to think of it. Or it was the usual faded type prints that everybody sees. I may have even projected a print of it. I was a member of a group in St. Louis, Missouri, called the Volunteer Film Association. And we used to take old RCA 60 millimeter projectors out to shut-ins and people who, you know, who couldn't get out. Of course, this was long before home video or anything like that. You know, this was back in the, in the early 60s that I did that. And we had a big library of cartoons and two real comedies and some features. And they'd give me a blue bag full of 16 millimeter prints. And I went out and, and ran them. And I'm pretty sure uh, they had an NTA print of this one. Christmas comes with it once a year. That may have been the first time I'd ever seen it. I want to show you something cool that I found online. Okay. An, an original background painting from the cartoon. Well, that's a beauty. God, look at that. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, I was having a discussion with a friend of mine who said that um, it's always a little hard to judge the color in the finished film from the artwork because they made these so that they would photograph in Technicolor a certain way. And when we see the actual painting, a lot of times it doesn't match what's on the film, but that was done on purpose. So because they knew that the three strip Technicolor system had its own peculiarities and the colors went one way or it went, they went cool or they went warm or however they were supposed to go. So um, we see the original art and it doesn't necessarily match up with the film, but that's okay. You know, that's the way it was intended to be. What I want to show you next as well, it's not the best looking version. I'm trying to find a better copy of it, but this is the um, original one sheet poster. Wow, look at that. That looks like some, like some of your posters, Mauricio. Yeah, so... You know, for, uh, your, for your New York uh, event, the way the colors are and everything. It's beautiful. They've even got Grampy's little toy train in the middle that's made out of a teapot and plates <laughs> that's really lovely and the and the washboard a toy it's got a lot of things from the film in it that's really a nice poster a lot of posters you see don't are not as well drawn as this one and don't have any ideas from the movie <laughs> that they're illustrating you know that's very nice yeah this one's definitely one of my favorites hopefully we can find a a better image of it soon but um but yeah, just to give some background on on this restoration, um, yeah, this is something that, that apparently has been in the minds of of uh, '90s kids, my generation, uh, growing up through uh, public domain cassettes. Apparently, you know, this was featured in in a lot of those back in the day. And yes. a, as I've been posting clips online people are getting this nostalgia trip, you know, just watching, you know, the little kids crying or, you know, the toys breaking or the, the little song that goes along with it and Grampy, of course. Um, and this is a cartoon that came out in 1936, December 4th. It's the only cartoon with just Grampy. Um, and in color. So, yeah, this is the way we got this done was, you know, we we asked Paramount if we could, you know, get this in time for the holidays. And thankfully, you know, they they, they let us, you know, get a get the scans, the the original camera negatives they, and big shouts wow. out to the Paramount team over there. We, we really couldn't have done this without them. And we got this over to Jack Theakston and Thad Kamarowski, which I think, you know, both of them. Yes, I um, do. So yeah, they knocked this one out of the park, and and tomorrow is when it's going to debut on Me TV on Tune In with Me. Um, you know, I found that out today. I was watching the end of Tune In with Me, and they announced it on there. So I thought, hmm, must be a Mauricio's print, and I guess it's going to be. <laughs> that's great. That's the thing about you know being connected with 
uh, the people over there. You know, big shout out to Mike, Bill, um, and, and Will, and um, Neil, of course. Mm -hmm. um, they've been really supportive in, in, you know, this whole cartoon revival. I'm sure you've seen just the, the amount of awesome cartoons that they're showing on, on their own channel. You know, the Popeyes, the, the Pink Panthers. And this gives us an opportunity to say, hey, you know, can we restore this cartoon so we could be, you know, feature it, it on Tune It With Me or... You know, where wonderful. Yeah, they even uh, run a uh, old Columbia color Rhapsody every once in a while. So, they, you know, they've got an interesting selection of things on there. So hopefully with that, you know, we can slowly get some more of this stuff out. And, and yeah, this one is just such a classic. So thankfully we got this done in time. And uh, Oh, yeah. You know, again, thank you to Paramount. Thank you to Jane Fleischer. Thank you to, to Thad Komarowski, to Jack to Steve Stanchfield, who was also very helpful with, you know, figuring out what to get from, you know, the audio. Because the, the, the great thing about this, we're not just restoring the visuals, we're also restoring the audio. So this is a... Did brand... Steve supply some audio to you? He, uh, he kind of, he let us know which audio to get, because this was the first time that we were actually getting audio scanned from the paramount negatives because usually what we would do is just get you know for example for somewhere in dreamland we just got the visuals and we used you know audio from one of the dvds but um we had to go through another company a deluxe media and they are the ones who you know go to ucla get the the negatives get those scans at their facilities and you know we get the final file so steve was you know helping us out and figuring out you know which how to get them you know what do you call it? The, I don't know much about now, the audio, but what you got the, and all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. When, when you got your materials from Paramount, did they have the soundtrack to Christmas uh, comes once a year? Yeah, so they have everything except mm -hmm. what Paramount can only provide are scans for us. So we have to get the audio scan through a different facility. So Because they don't have, I, I assume they don't have uh, the... Um, what do you call it the, the, the tools to get that done so they have to go through deluxe audio to get the uh, negative audio scans right they probably had the soundtrack on a separate negative uh, from um, you know from the color I would assume they did give us like a sheet that has all that information mm -hmm. so I could t definitely take a look and I'll let you know usually but that's the case but, you know, sometimes, like with a Bywork Cinecolor prints, sometimes he had the soundtrack on the same negative with the color. It, it varied. What's really cool is that we not only got Christmas, but we also got Swing You Sinners audio scan. So now we have two brand new audio scans of these cartoons. And the Swing That's You Sinners wonderful. one, we sent out to... Um, a guy named Ray who works in audio and he fixed that up for us and it sounds amazing. So what great. Like I mentioned, as we're not just restoring the visuals, we're actually also cleaning up the audio. And when, when we go into the screen songs, that's really going to be exciting because we're, we're not just saving like I said we're saving all of these different recordings that Paramount would do that the Fleischers would do because I believe those were all recorded live correct like the um, you know the, the I don't think they segments. were yeah I don't think they were singing or playing to a playback on those screen songs I think those were all photographed and they were making music at the same time because you know they're singing into a microphone usually the vocalist is singing into a microphone things like that so I think those were done live, although maybe not in every case, <laughs> but I think in most cases they were. But that's exciting news, too, that you, you got the track to uh, Swing You Sinners, because a lot of that was needle drop music that the Fleischers got from records. And sometimes the audio quality, even on a good print of that, isn't the optimum, you know. So uh, if you can equalize them properly and you know, do things with the levels and stuff. Maybe you can make it better. That, that that sounds pretty exciting. So what I'll do is I'll play Christmas Comes But Once a Year for you. Okay. And uh, 
yeah, just enjoy and excited for you to to see this finally in the the true original colors and you know the way it's well, supposed I'm to be excited. seen. So, <laughs> so here it is. Beautiful. Sammy Timber probably composed a lot of the original songs and One of their famous 3D setbacks. It's gorgeous. Well, look at that beautiful violet there on the sock. Look at those colors. They have a pastel look to them too, don't they? Beautiful. I love, I love our, was it our trustee or something? Crabby looking old person. There's a old wag at the wall clock. Look at that yellow on there. Oh gosh. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! There's a good use of cycle animation where they just color the kids different colors, you know? You and me and he and she and we are glad because... Very nice. Why? Because, because, because there is a Santa Claus. Oh! Christmas comes up once a year. Beautiful. It's interesting how the wood fence behind them has a greenish tone to it. Very nice. Wish I could recognize the Fleischer animator styles more. I don't know if this is Bill Henning or uh, or uh, Seymour Knight Telefor. But it's, it, this sequence is really necessary to set up what Grampy does because all the toys have to show defects. So Grampy can be the big hero and the, and the inventor when he comes in in a little while. I'm not sure if this is Margie Hines. Or who's doing some of the Christmas comes but once a year, now it's here, now it's here, bringing lots of joy and cheer, tra -la 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 -la. Now this is a guy named Everett Clark, who's doing the voice of Grampy and singing for him. There is a Santa Claus, Christmas comes but once a year, now it's here, now it's here, really caught that old time lots of joy and cheer, voice. -la 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 -la. Now on this on this print I'm seeing I can't see um, Professor Grampy and Venter too well on the side of his sleigh, so hopefully What's that'll be correct. Boy, that's great. Oh, that's a beautiful looking scene. Bright yellow blood. <laughs> Looks like a pretty gloomy Christmas for those poor kids. What can I do? Let me think. Huh? He used this scene many times in the Grampies where he gets an idea. Hooray! I've got it! And then the multiple leg thing. That's a wonderful day. When you do a couple of cartoons with the snow. God, look how bright the yellows are on his spats. And his they just sing out. The purples, the reds, greens. Wonderful to be able to see all this. <laughs> yeah, this is his little washboard 
sleigh, or, or yeah, your sled, which you can see on the poster. Look at those violets on that thing. It's beautiful. Now the Fleischers love inventions so much, and they always made all the cartoon inventions look practical. Even though probably in reality they wouldn't work. Like for instance, there's no rubber band on this plane, but it, <laughs> it goes anyway. It was like to convey Grampy as being a genius. Most of the action in this cartoon is making something out of nothing. But this one has an extra dimension because it's Christmas time, so he's making everyone happy. old-fashioned hand treadle uh, sewing machine. No electric power there. Ah, look at that purple. That's fantastic. <laughs> Grampy has a head kind of like a, a tall cylinder, doesn't he? That does leave room for extra room for his brain. When you're doing crowd scenes, it's helpful to have all the members of the crowd basically look alike. <laughs> it simplifies the animation a lot. Wow. I just happen to have a box of cotton that big. You know? This is one of my favorite scenes because I'm a big toy train fan. I made a toy train out of a percolator and a bunch of china and a sugar bowl. And a grater and books. All this, it all looks possible because it's all household objects that the audience would be familiar with. Right? And not only is he an inventor, but he's an artist too. He backdrops in an instant. There's another grater being used. He loves graters. He used it to make snow with. Now they're building up to the, uh, the big gag at the end of the picture now. Fleischers were economical, but we're not against the losing scene. Ah, here we go. This is my favorite part coming up while the lights come on. And the Christmas seals. <laughs> oh, slight tuberculosis. Boy, what a print. That's a beauty. Fabulous. Splice your cartoons restored. Very good, Thad and Jack and Jane and you, Mauricio, and Mr. Stanchfield. Very, very nice. So, yeah, that that's Christmas comes but once a year. Boy, oh, boy. And what we'll do is, you know. I love how it leads up to that. They anticipate that last scene so nicely, you know, with the Christmas tree. Yeah. Now he just puts everything together from umbrellas. <laughs> So it's amazing to finally see these sets, you know. Pretty much the colors that they were painted on the little set. Now, they don't use too many setbacks in this cartoon, but this is definitely the prominent one. The uh, scene where um, everything comes down the stairs and, and Grampy spreads cotton and then paints a big backdrop on the wall almost looks three-dimensional even though it, it, it really wasn't a setback, but it has a three-dimensional feel to it, the way the uh, kids are tobogganing down the cotton and everything. Oh, there's, there's the trustee. I think that's a funny, that's a funny detail. The, 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 you know, the portrait on the wall, our trustee. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the one thing I noticed on this. I, I didn't notice it before in the old version. So, <laughs> yeah, I've I've never really seen the lettering under that too clearly. Now, is is the finished print is is that going to have uh, the you know the the lettering on the side of Grampy's sled at the beginning of the cartoon a, a little bit more uh, distinct? You know. Oh, look at that! You see that? Look at yeah. That. See, see what I'm doing on. I'm not, yeah, this accident. flashing. Yeah, I like I like how that you you found the same drawing in the cycle, but they're carrying different toys, and they have different colored hair and, and night night clothes. Yeah, let's I like that to, effect. Let's go to the. It's very good. Thing. Yeah, this one. Yes, there it says for. Now I can see it much more clearly here than I could when it was at speed. Where it says Professor Grampy Inventor. Yeah, see, it's a little bit indistinct there. Almost like there's DVNR in it or something. Yeah, when you put it on still, you can see it more clearly. But when it's at speed, it gets kind of indistinct. I don't know why that is. And of course, you're dealing with values that are very close. That light yellow and that light yellow green together. Yeah. What were they thinking? <laughs> 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 I love those yellow gloves. They're fantastic. I think that um, Seymour Nitel animated this scene. I'm, I'm not certain, but I think he did. They worked it out, and then it was the scene of 10,000 uses because they <laughs> think it's in every Grampy cartoon. What's your favorite Grampy cartoon? My favorite is, God, I can't remember the title today. It's a black and white one. It's the one where he makes a roller coaster out of uh, fire escapes on the side of Betty's apartment building. And it's a 3D setback wonder, that scene, because they're riding on a little car on, you know, on the, uh, the roller coaster tracks that are all made out of fire escapes and the building's rotating at the same time that they're on the on the roller coaster that's a wonderful scene you've seen that cartoon haven't you i believe that's house cleaning blues that's probably it yeah that's a great shot that i really get carried away when i see that one <laughs> but this is a very good grampy too one of the one of the best ones Yeah, I love those multiple legs. Awesome. And at this point, uh, dry brush blur wasn't done in color, which is interesting. It's it's pen lines. It works, but later on they discovered that if they do the dry brush blur with the color, they used to call it self color, the same color that it's behind, you know, on the character. It it looks better and it looks looks more solid. That, I love that scene where he's picking up all the, all the household objects. I think that's a corn popper, something like that. He makes a mandolin out of a corn popper. But look at all the all the colors. And again, he's got cheese graters all over the place. There's another grater in that shot. Yeah, I love that. That little treadle, treadle type sing, singer sewing machine, but that, for instance, that's a hand treadle or a foot treadle, and the uh, electric generator uh, pops the corn. So you have the old technology and newer technology. <laughs> the little electric generator, and that purple is just sings right out of the screen. That purple pillow, wow. Yeah, he's using it for Santa's stomach. Yeah, this one would go great on a program with um, the Silly Symphony Santa's Workshop because it's almost the same kind of business in that they show how Santa, you know, it's a Disney Silly Symphony, how Santa makes all his toys with ordinary uh, materials. They would kind of go to go well together, I think. 
Yeah, there he is with a giant box of cotton. You can kind of see how kind of shabby, almost looks like, you know, shabby wall that needs a paint job anyway. So when he paints his mural on there, it works. It, it refurbishes the, uh, the wall. There's that wonderful toy train I like so much. I love those, that old fashioned electric plug he's using with that, with that type of switch. They don't make those switches anymore. So it's an electric train in a way in that the, um, the percolator is driving it. It's making the steam. And then there all the, the plates and everything else just fit along behind. And there's the grater, of course. Grampy's favorite tool. <laughs> Yeah, it just goes right through it. And there he is, a master artist. Yeah, those cool blue violets and warm yellows, reds for the wreath. Yeah, I can really appreciate these colors so much. And there's a, there's another greater gag with the with the snow being generated by soap flakes. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, everything looks crystal clear on these stills for the most part. It's really, really nice. You kept a DVNR away from it. <laughs> that's really beautiful. And it's got an old fashioned hand cranked Victrola. Again, this is a combination of, you know, hand powered things powered by springs and electric power it was this was this 1936 was a was a transitional uh period in in powering um toys <laughs> and household machinery and, and they're using uh, plumber's friends for the <laughs> for the ski poles when they go into going down the cotton you see those little suction cups on the end of them the more you look at this, the more you notice all the, the ideas that went with it. I have no idea who is doing story sketch on these things, but uh, whoever did it really worked out some interesting stuff. And there's, there's the, uh, the second 3D setback in the film. And it looks just like umbrellas too. They matched it really well. That's wonderful the way they achieve this effect of the lights on on the tree. And what makes this also very nice is that the light from the adjoining rooms is coming through and casting a little ray of light on the floor that has a real homey touch to it. And there's the Christmas seal. I think that was the authentic Christmas seals uh, emblem that year because the Christmas seals used to be very popular and they change their design every year. Very good. So yeah, there's Christmas comes, but once a year, one down 600. What's more the next one, Mauricio? <laughs> What's the next one? <laughs> the next one I'd say I really, really want to get either small fry or kids in the shoe. Oh yeah. In terms, in Those are both good. Color classics. I know there's um there's a, a couple other really beautiful ones, Hawaiian birds. Oh yeah. Musical yes. memories. That um, is the champ of all the three D setback cartoons, musical memories. Almost yeah. every shot in it is a three D setback. So those are my personal picks but of course I'm, I'm gonna i love small fry because it's got those um isn't that the one that's got the, the little fish is in a cave under the sea and there's these um sort of like ray fish you know that generate light from within inside them swimming after him and they really get the effect very well of light being inside the fish i really love that shot that would be great to see from 
uh, original negative. Yeah, that's you know that's the, the, the colors one. would be so much better. Yeah, I really want to see that one. Um, but yeah, there's so many. Uh, have I shown you Cobweb Hotel? I don't know if I've seen that in a while. I, I you restored that fairly recently, didn't you? Paramount did, but Paramount did it. Yeah. So we have their version. Um, but what I'll do is uh, I have a couple other ones that I want to show you, but I'll save that for another time. So okay. But, well, I um, really appreciate you taking your time to show me this one because it's really terrific. Of course. And yeah. uh, I, I think they're going to love it tomorrow. Yeah. I'm when excited. they run it on Tune In with me. And then what I'll do is I'll I'll have this um, on our YouTube channel following that, so that way the whole world can enjoy it. So. Wonderful. That's going to be great. That's a great christmas gift for everybody exactly so uh thank you again mark i'll have plenty more for you in the future you're welcome anytime thanks for calling mauricio thank you mark you have a good night okay and same to you yeah bye for now